standard deviation gives you an idea of how much variation actually exists in a process while taking outliers somewhat into account. In the example of the grades from last lectures, the sample standard deviation indicates that most of the grades are going to fall within 10.33 points on either side of the average. That tells the teacher that students have a fairly wide performance on her test. If the results were an average score of 90 with a standard deviation of 3, he or she might assume that students in class were learning and retaining the knowledge as expected. If the average score was 64 with a standard deviation of 2, then he or she might assume students in class were not retaining the knowledge as expected or there was some issue with the test structure. Both of these situations indicate a small variance in the way students are performing, which points to the success or problem being tied to the class, the teaching, or the test. On the other hand, if the average score was 60 with a standard deviation of 30, then some students were performing very well while others were performing poorly. This might indicate to the teacher that some students are falling behind. If he or she took samples from several classes, he or she might investigate and realize that the lowest scores were mostly from one class, which could indicate that he or she forgot to adequately cover a certain concept in that class. Standard deviation alone serves as a pointer for where to investigate within the process for problems or solutions. Another reason to calculate it is because it is involved in many of the other statistical processes we cover in later lectures on Thilene Six Sigma course. Standard deviation becomes an important concept in both analysis and statistical process control and often serves as the starting point for further statistical Six Sigma analysis.